to the super, not funny show, reviews. And today I'm going to be reviewing Star Trek Strange New World Season 2, Episode 4. It's entitled Among the Lotus Eaters, coming to you from Paramount+. Plus. So, what did I think about it, and should you be watching? And before we get into the review, get down there, hit like on this video. In this episode of Strange New Worlds, uh, we have an away mission. One of those uh, incomprehensible things where the command crew, for some reason, feel like they need to go down on planet side uh, instead of the many lower level officers that exist on the ship. But whatever, it's a Star Trek thing. It's it's a thing that happens. So uh, we have... Uh, Ortegas is ready to fly down into uh, Rigel 7, which is uh, a bit of a return mission for this crew. Uh, previously, they had been to the, the planet before. It's a pre-warp civilization. Uh, they went down for, uh, you know, observation. Kind of got caught up, had to leave in a hurry, and lost a few crew members. And now they're back because some anomalous uh, structures or... or topography shows up on uh, on their scans and it is in the form of a uh, a federation uh, i guess you call it the delta and so apparently there's some contamination they got to go clean it up and so uh but ortegas is very much uh she, you know disappointed because she still has to you know fly the ship instead of uh staying there because of the weird uh you know radiation or whatever that was going on so um, and I, you know, she's very disappointed and Hey, I have to admit at the start of the episode, I was disappointed. I was like, are they going to sideline or take us again? That's ridiculous. Like we haven't seen enough of her in this, ep you know, in the season anyway. Uh, but we'll get back to that later. But what we, uh, find is that, um, you know, we get Pike, get Lon and, uh, you know, Dr. Mbanga who all go down to the surface uh, to try to figure out wh where where the contamination is that they can start to get rid of it, but they're accosted by a group of the the uh, you know the Rigelians and are taken to a castle, uh, and they're you know herded there by what's clearly phaser weapons, and they find out you know spoiler that uh, one of the uh, the crew members that was presumed dead was in fact. Uh, alive and was had set himself up as king of the Rigelians and as punishment for leaving him stranded there for so many years uh, he sentences the three of them to be to go work with the that field Rigelians which of course hearing that sort of made me think of oh was, is this some slavery stuff and it kind of is kind of is some slavery or indentured servitude sort of stuff um, and in the process they learned that the exotic radiation that kind of bathes the atmosphere of Rigel 7 uh, contributes to long-term or, you know, memory loss or something like that. Look, honestly, it's it's some real made-up, you know, semi-real ma but real made-up shit to kind of propel the plot forward. But in the tradition of Trek, that's pretty much, a, a, you know, a de, you know, de jour sort of thing. That's they make up something that sort of impairs or you know causes the, uh, the, the the you know the action or the drama or whatever. And th in this case, uh, Pike, Mbanga, and Lon losing their memories, uh, but not losing you know they it, it, it's sort of explained they lose you know s some memories, but not like the m major things that are kind of embedded in their uh, their psyche, I guess. And so this sort of leads them to, you know, very slowly but surely forgetting who they are and what they, you know, what they're about, what they need to do. And it looks dire, especially when going back up to the Enterprise, we see that uh, this radiation is affecting the crew of the Enterprise as well, uh, where they're losing time and losing memories and so forth. And so it really becomes a two pronged sort of dilemma. Do you keep the Enterprise there when it's clear that? these memory things could make it so that no one can operate the ship, which I'll also say is kind of weird because they haven't, you know, artificial intelligence is, or that, you know, a ship's computer, couldn't it sort of do that? But we had learned earlier because of the tricky navigation that they actually do need a human navigator there. That's why Ortegas is on, was on uh, the con. 
uh, back down on the uh, on the surface. You know, the way they get uh, you know met up with a lo- you know one of the field Rigelians who tries to very kindly explain what's going on and help them to sort of adjust to the fact that they won't be able to keep their memories and um, and try to give them some coping mechanisms. Uh, which, of course, you know, at the end of the day, of course, that's not going to be enough. But it does give them an opportunity to sort of have a philosophical discussion about, you know, the memories and whether or not it's good to keep them. You know, this guy, the guy he has, he had, a, you know, had a family, doesn't remember them. And he thinks it's a gift that he doesn't have these memories. It helps him to deal with the drudgery of his life and everything like that and just enjoy being alive at that time. Uh, and that knowing that he had a family and doesn't have any anymore, he's happy to, to like sort of avoid that pain by avoiding even knowing what he lost. Uh, but of course that's not good enough. So, uh, especially when, um, uh, you know, Lon gets injured when, when they'd have kind of an escape attempt, uh, or they, you know, they, they subdue the guards and everything like that. And it's clear that they're going to have to get back to the, the castle, where supposedly there are some memories, their memories are being stored. This is the sort of like, you know, wishful thinking, I guess you could say, of people who don't know just enough to like make up, you know, some stories, but not enough to actually know what's really going on. But it does lead them to go back. And there's, you know, there's some action. You get some good Captain Pike, you know, leading the charge sort of action stuff. Uh, Mbanga shows, you know, what, you know, how... Um, you know, how tough he is. We all know that. Um, and we also get to see, you know, the, you know, the person that helps them sort of helping them along, but not wanting to go to the castle. Cause they, as he said, that's where the people, you know, the people that live there, they get to keep their memories and, uh, to try to find out, uh, why. Um, meanwhile, up, up on the ship. And I was, I mentioned Ortega's before, uh, Ortega's was sidelined, I thought, in this episode, except she wasn't. She's actually very pivotal to this episode because prior to everyone losing their memories, she and other people who were kind of on that, uh, you know, on the, their duty stations are given data pads to help them remember who they are so they can read and see who they are, which actually turns out to be like a not good idea because, you know, even Spock himself is like, I can't read whatever this is. Uh, which is, I think for Spock, that indicates that his first language is not English or whatever standard, you know, uh, that the Federation has, but is in fact something from, uh, Vulcan. And so he can't even read who he is. Um, and that leads, uh, Ortega, she completely loses her memory, but she does manage through by, by force of will and, and talking to the computer to learn that, as she says, she's, Ortegas and Lieutenant Ortegas and she flies the ship. Um, and, you know, in, in her core, in other words, that that's her identity and that's something she doesn't lose. And it leads, of course, to her. She's the best damn person that's going to fly the Enterprise. So, of course, this turns out to be a pivotal bit of not just information, but affirmation for her to help her, you know, be able to fly the ship, even though supposedly she doesn't remember how to um really i actually you know they don't do enough with ortegas in this season but this part was really great just because it really kind of exposes who she is as a person and like you know she's a look look let's just say what is she's a pilot she's like a top gun pilot she's one of those like i'm the best there is at at what i do sort of person very cocky and and sure of herself and even when she doesn't know who she is she's still sure of herself and she she kind of talks herself into being able to fly the ship thought that was really great and i love to see ortega shine um so back down on the uh kind of on the surface it this is all about christopher pike uh captain pike um who even without his memories who is he underneath all of that who is he really at his core he's a fighter and he, he really gets at it. Like they go in and they kind of run through the, uh, the castle and he ends up confronting, you know, the, the, you know, the former crew member, uh, to try to just, you know, as he's fighting to get his memories back, 
only to learn, of course, that there's no such thing and it's just a function of the radiation and all that stuff. But we could really kind of see a pike that is could really kind of go too far, um, which is something I don't I don't know that they they address so much that he's like, I, I'll do whatever for my crew. But he really was wor- ready looked like to murder that guy until the effect of the castle's protection sort of got him back to who he you know, who he is um, in general. So I thought all that was. Uh, was very interesting, uh, especially because, you know, Pike hadn't had a hu- huge amount of, you know, um, centering in this in this season. Uh, just seeing him, and not just the leadership, but also his, his real willingness to kind of follow through in some pretty brutal ways in order to save his crew, very cool. And um, I, I think it's a good bit of uh, character growth. But also, because earlier in the se- uh, episode, he had sort of pushed away uh, his, you know, his girlfriend, uh, Captain Battelle, and, uh, you know, and it seems like this is a thing he always does, but losing his memories, but having a talisman that led back to her really kind of reminded him of what he was going to lose and got him to get some perspective. So like, I think the, the, really the drama of this episode was about the, the philosophical underpinning and, and what's really important and you know who are you at your core and yes there was some cool action and all that i so i mean i think overall it's a very strong episode i like uh, episodes two and three are like top notch really top notch episodes but this is no slouch at all uh, i i thought it was a really uh really good and fun episode made you think some and uh was it was a nice little you know nod to to you know some trek lore for uh, Rigel 7. So all around good episode. But uh, what did you guys think about it? What did you think about what I had to say? Get down to the comment section. Leave your thoughts there. And of course, you can always hit me up. Supernotfunnyshow at gmail.com or at supernotfunnys1 on Twitter. And while you're down there, do me a favor. Hit like on this video. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. All that good stuff helps with the algorithm so that more people see these videos. and helps to grow the channel. All right, thanks for joining me. Come back next week. We're going to be talking about uh, the very next episode, episode five of Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Until then, I have been Mo, your comic extraordinaire on all things pop culture, and I'll see you guys on the other side of the thread. Peace.